so let me move on to the next topic and that is like four important terms that you should know inside the data guard so in the data guard we have some important terms and the first one is primary primary database you already have a slight idea about the primary database and then we have the standby database we already know a fair amount of details about the standby database then there is a very important component that is log shipping service what is this log shipping service so guys in data guard the buffers to be moved from the source or the primary to the standby server right so this service is known as log shipping service So this service is responsible for shipping the logs. Now, of course, I'm using the term called as buffers, but technically the shipping happens of the redo logs. So now you might have a question like, why are we shifting the redo logs? Because redo logs have all the entries of the changes that are happening inside your primary database. So if we can ship the redo logs from primary and apply them on standby then definitely our databases will be exactly same they will be consistent so over here you need to understand the third important term or the service that will be working is the log shipping service and then the fourth important component of data guard is log apply service Now that the redo log, which has been shipped from the primary to standby, definitely it will reside somewhere on the hard disk, right? So log shipping service, what it will do is it will copy the redo log and it will put it somewhere on the standby server, maybe under slash u03 logs. Now there is an apply service that is always running on the standby database. Its job is whenever the log shipping service copies a log from primary to standby it will apply the log in the standby database so these are the four important components inside the data guard and guys please by heart it uh, because this is also one of my favorite important interview questions to understand someone's ability or their uh, knowledge on oracle data guard so these components uh, I think these are not the terms, these are important components. And then we have some critical important terms that you must know. These terms, all right, again, there are four important terms. And the first one is failover. The second one is switchover. The third one is in sync and fourth one is gap. So let us understand each term one by one and then uh, definitely if time permits, I think we have a couple more topics. So guys, fail over and switch over. This is also one of the most discussed topic in data guard, fail over and switch over. So guys, we have two servers. One is primary, one is standby. If let's take primary server completely crashes and the client who were connected to the primary server, they are moved and are now connected to the standby server. So primary connection is completely gone. The server is destroyed and then you need to rebuild the server. This is a perfect situation of failover. Failover means the primary is not at all available. And in this kind of event, you might even need to rebuild the server. The primary completely crashed or primary server is completely destroyed. 
and clients are moved on to the standby server and they are happily working. This is a failover. In a switchover, switchover is manual. So we have clients. This is your primary database. This is your standby database. When we say switch over, this term is important, switch. That means the roles are being switched. Your primary is converted into standby and your standby is converted into primary. So clients who were earlier connected to the primary database, they will switch over to the earlier standby which is currently primary. So that means initially if the logs were being shipped from this side from left to the right side because this was primary this was standby once you perform the switch over the logs will start shipping from the right side to the left side because now the right side server has become primary and the left side server has become standby now this switch over is performed by a DBA it is a controlled environment or it is a controlled activity where you test whether in future let's take if there is a failover the standby is able to take the clients and standby is working perfectly fine I repeat switch over is a controlled activity it is performed by a DBA and in switch over the roles are reversed the primary becomes standby the standby becomes primary the log shipping is completely turned into different direction it starts switching from the new primary to the new standby that means it is going in the reverse direction and a switch over is performed to test whether the standby server is capable of handling a disaster which might happen to primary server in future so one example I want to give so many DBAs they configure the data guard they configure the data guard they configure a primary they configure a standby but they never perform a switch over and then they think like whenever there is a server crash whenever primary crashes the standby will work fine and suddenly one fine day when real when in reality the primary crashes they also see that their standby is also not working now in those kind of situations like God can only save you but the primary job of a DBA is when you set up a data guard environment you need to ask permission from clients and take time to perform switchovers if you ask me personally it should be done once in three months just to see if everything is working fine if you can do it once in a month you perform a switchover you see that your standby is smoothly converting into primary and clients are able to connect to the standby server then it's fine if there is a problem in the switchover guys then there will always be a problem in the failover so you need to make sure the switchovers are smooth so that your servers can handle the failovers all right and the next important term is in sync for this I'll take another paint and then explain it's very simple guys like on your primary server we know that logs are being applied because logs contain the exact transactional information so that means we have log number on primary so we can always check whether it is uh, what is the archive log number running whether it is 13 or 14 and then we also have standby right now on standby we have something called as log apply service log apply service right now we also have log shipping service
Now one fine day what you did is you said okay let me check if my standby database is up to the mark. So when you logged into the standby database you saw that on the standby the log number is also 13. That means on primary the log number that is running is 13. On standby the log number is 13. Then you call it as in sync. That means your standby database is exactly in sync with the primary database. But let us assume one fine day when you logged in the log number was 55 but on the standby the log number is still 13. That means there is a gap. These are two important terms. So if the log numbers are not same on primary and standby then you call it as a gap and as a DBA your job is to resolve the gap. Don't worry guys how to resolve the gap and all we definitely have some activities for that and to keep it simple because I know experienced DBAs might be eager to know the answers. The gap uh, like the simplest solution for the gap should be either there is a problem with log apply service or there's a problem with log shipping service. That's it. 99% of the time there is issue with only these two services. That's the reason the there is a gap in the logs. Either the log shipping service is not shipping the logs after the log number 13 or the log apply service has stopped after the log number 13. Most of the times like 99% of the time the issues are with these two services. So what is in sync? If your standby database log number is exactly same as your primary database applied log number then you call it as in sync and if the log numbers are not same then you call it as gap. Now there are again further scenarios I don't want to get into it. There is something called as log apply delay. Let's take if log apply delay is one hour then you cannot have a situation where your log numbers are same. Now in that case those are different scenarios definitely we will be discussing about those scenarios in our later session but let us keep it simple for now. So guys any doubts till now? Now I am getting worried if you have no doubts still. Yeah, Arun Satish here. Yes Satish. Okay, uh, one question I don't know if we are still far away from this topic but still I want to ask you. Uh, I have a primary mm -hmm. and there are there is a secondary. Now assume that I have about uh, multiple setup like this. Okay, uh, one for finance, one for marketing and so on. Now I am checking the primary. I want to know uh, which is the corresponding secondary for this. On which server and where it, uh, Very where the database. You will understand in the configuration, don't worry. Okay. Yeah. I don't have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, please, can you briefly explain the log apply service one more time, please? Yeah, sure. So, okay, let me take a new paint and then I'll explain. So, I'll put you on mute meanwhile I explain this one. So, guys, uh, the on primary, we have logs, right? Now, there are two types of logs. If you know, we have redo logs and archive logs, correct? So inside data guard definitely we have configurations where we can apply the archive logs directly onto the standby or we can also consider to apply the redo logs. Now those comes under protection modes and various configurations which we are going to understand. So at this stage I'll use the term called as logs. So it, it means both like whether we can choose to directly apply the redo logs or we can choose to apply the archive logs from the primary to standby right now in this case what happens is log shipping service this service is responsible to copy the new logs that are generated on primary onto some location on standby that's the job of log shipping service so log shipping service let's take log number 10 is generated so this will be copied by this service and it will put it under u03 
log underscore 10. Log number 11 is generated. Log shipping service will ship the log file under 11 and then so on. The 12 is generated and it is shipped to the standby server, right? As these logs are arriving from the primary to the standby under this location, they are just arrived and there is no meaning of these log files until they are applied to the database. So you have the instance that is running and you have the database, right? So these logs are to be applied. When we say apply guys, apply means the transactions inside this 10 number log needs to be executed on this database. So let's take the 10 number log file is having a create table statement. That means this create table statement must be executed on this standby server also, right? And then only those changes will be applied onto the database. So that way what happens is log apply service. Log apply service will actually pick up each archive log or the redo log depends which log is coming and start adding it to the database like first uh, the 10 number is applied, 11 number is applied, 12 number, 13 number and so on. So log shipping service job is to ship the logs from the primary to standby. Log apply service job is to apply the archive or the redo log files onto the standby database. I hope that helps you Salaman. Yes, thank you. Good.